Right. That's why you got to keep yourself together because you know you carry the you carry the gift. You carry the power. You can't lose your you can't lose your sanity. You can't lose your mind because if you lose your mind, you can't get to the the power. Say hallelujah! If you lose a, if you get uneasy, you can't get to the power. That's why you can't lose yourself in this situation, circumstance. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. You don't need peace to use this power. And if you ain't got peace, you can't use this power. That's why a lot of people can't use the power because they ain't got peace. How many know that the enemy come to torment you? He come to torment you because he knows as long as you got peace, I got this, okay, I'm going to keep calm. How many know when you keep calm in your worst situation, you, 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 you can handle it? You go through it, but when you lose that calmness, when you lose that peace, you say, Doc, I need some more medicine. Because <laughs> you lose that peace. Ain't God good. But when you're holding that peace, I, ain't, I don't need nothing. I'm all right. I'm, I'm just going to keep pressing my way. Amen. Amen. I'm going to keep going because cause I'm trusting God. I'm depending on God. Amen. Now, I mean, I've never had a sharp pain. See, that's it's a decision time. Your life, when you get that shit up, pay, you will decide. You, that's, that's when your decision be made. Say hallelujah. It's that constant pain, that constant ache, that constant worry, that constant. Y'all know how when you press on every side and when it started consuming you, you begin to react. You get uneasy. Amen. That means you lose, you slowly but surely lose control. Amen. And either you're going to take a natural way to calm down, or you're going to take a spiritual way to calm down. In my heart. And at the same time, it's all spiritual. But we're so used to the natural, to most of the time we go to the natural to calm down. Y'all know how? I'm going to go and say it's a resting place. I'm going to you can rest without sleeping. I'm going to you can rest without sleeping. Ain't God good. You ain't got to always sleep to get that rest. But you get that rest in Jesus. Yeah. Oh, y'all, that confidence and that peace in God. And, and see, the reason they say, how do I get that thing on these things? Oh, y'all ain't saying that. <laughs> Some of the highest thing on these things. Whatever pure, whatever holy, whatever righteous, whatever good. He said, think on these things. In my heart. That's how you get it. Notice. Anytime you're going through something, you ain't thinking like you're supposed to be thinking. That's why it feels like it, it can't. Why? Because you're thinking of switched over to the problem. Until the problem solver. And, right, huh? and you concentrate on what you're going through instead of who your deliverer is. But he said, think on these things. When God tells you to do something, it's the reason why he wants you to do it. See, he knows you're going through something. He knows you're dealing with something. He said, but you got to think on these things in order to defeat it. You can't defeat it thinking on the problem. You know how? On the situation. And thinking on the pain. Ain't God good. And ain't this amazing? I'm going to tell you how, how powerful thinking is. You know when you take a medicine, it takes time for it to go down to your system. And for it to actually work. You know that, right? But when you first took it, you say, I'm feeling better already. <laughs> you know how? So that means to tell you that your, pop, your mind, because you just took that pill, Making you feel like it's working already when it ain't even start melting yet. It ain't even got in your system yet. So to me, where's the power? Is the power in the pill or is the power in your mind? Oh, glory to God. Y'all in the house? Because it, it takes time for it to get down to your system, dissolve, and go through your blood system. And go into your mind. Y'all with me? But you just took it. Amen, huh? How many know you went to sleep and you slept for five minutes? You got you laid in the bed and you got some rest and you was done. You was good. You went in there 30 minutes. But that's not can't be possible in the natural. So it wasn't really the sleep. It was you giving it to the flesh. Oh my God. So it happened because it was more spiritual than it was natural. 
is always more spiritual than it is natural. That's why I tell people, take a channel check, check things out before you go to reacting. And if you look at your, your track record, you'll find out the things you've been doing. That's why when you go back to do them again, they don't work because they never work. You just had confidence that they work. <laughs> Anybody how? And that's why you end up upping your doses. Now you're taking five. You're not supposed to take the two. <laughs> because your confidence is there on that level. Your mind is on a level that when you took it the first time, you would take about a half. And in your mind, it worked. But it really didn't work. But it did work because your mind said it worked. You had confidence in that it worked. I'm just talking about the power of the mind. Y'all know how? And the power of mind. But see, the mind is unstable. The mind shifts. The mind, you can't trust the mind until it's be truly transformed. And you can put on one hand how many people's mind is truly all transformed. Glory to God. It ain't because why? Because when something happens, how you know when your mind transforms? When your mind is transformed, you think on these things. <laughs> oh, glory. When it ain't fully transformed, you don't think on these things. So when something first happens, you think on these things. But when if you your mind ain't fully transformed, you don't think it goes all the way around and then come back to these things. <laughs> yeah. Y'all how? Y'all with me? Ooh, look, it making sense? So how the enemy get in? Because your mind is controlling most of you. Most of you. Most of you. Because it's not that you're thinking on new things. It's got you thinking on other things. Y'all in the house? You can put somebody in the same room and give them the same stuff, and each one of them have a different answer. Why is that? Because they got different minds. And they got different experiences. Y'all know how? You can get somebody some older news and they think it's a state. But they're getting to you that grew up real well. You be like, what is this? <laughs> and we be looking at you crazy. Like, what you mean, what is this? This is good. So you got to understand the transformation of the mind. And the reason I'm saying that because I'm going to give you a scripture in a minute. Because you got to watch your thinking. You got to think on these things. People stay broke. I'm going to know you're blessed and don't know you're blessed. It depends on how you think. When you go by people every day that don't have near what you have, but yet you cursing and you thinking God ain't who he is because, you, because you're not thankful for what you have. Because you're watching other people. So you can't really, you can't really enjoy your blessing when somebody want to take your hand and give you this. If so many people want your hand, when you're ready to throw in the towel, but it said, don't throw it in, give it to me, and you take mine. Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> but because the way you think and the way the enemy control you through the mind, you never have enough, even when God done bless you with more than enough. Oh, glory. Ain't God good? How, how many know when it rained that you had shelter? How many when the rain was coming out, you had shelter? How many know if somebody ain't had no shelter? Somebody had to lay out in the rain. Somebody have a roof over their head, but, but you ran right to my Lord. I need you to bless me. When somebody said, Lord, just put a roof over my head. So you want to be, want God to bless you with more when you ain't thankful with the Lord. Because you don't know God already started a good work. And the only one hindering him from doing it is you. Because you're not thankful in the field what he's giving you. You still complain about what you got. Because you got to understand that God ready to elevate you, but God can't elevate with you because you're a moment and a complainer. Oh, glory to God. God ready to give you. God ready. Look at your name. Say, God ready. God ready to give you whatever you decide. God ready to give you whatever you want. God is ready to open up. God, it ain't hard for God to bless you. It don't take long for God to bless you. It take you a long time to understand that I gotta be thankful who I am.
because God has orchestrated my step. God is in control of my life. Who he pre know he predestined. He knew I was coming down in the valley, but he knew he had a method and a plan to bring me up. But I want to be in control. And right when I need to be thankful for the most, I'm the complaining the most. I'm in the valley now. I'm in the valley. I need to praise him. I need to glorify him. Say, God, I know you're in control. You got me, God. I give you praise because when I was up, you had me up. Now you got me in the valley. God, I give you praise. I give you glory. Woo. Because now I know how it feels to be up top and be in the valley. I know what I have and don't have. I know how to be able to move and when I want to move, I know when I can't move and I want to move. I know when I can go to store when I want to, but now I can't go when I want to. So I understand that God giveth and God taketh away. I know God is in control. Because if I was my people, I would have kept myself up. So you understand that friction you feel. God said, I want to show you me. But I can't show you me unless I take you up and bring you down. Uh, see, some of y'all understand. A lot of times you say, God, show me your face. You guys say, You sure you won't see it? You say, God, show me your glory. You say, You sure you won't see my glory? Because in order for me to show you my glory, I got to take you down so you understand what it is to be down. So when I bring you into my glory, you know what it is. But I can't, under- can't do that without bringing you in a place where you can understand who I am. Because him that come to God got to first know who he is. So all, I got to take you through some things and bring you through some things so when I bring you up, you'll give me the praise and give me the glory because you know I was God all by myself. And the problem is that when God going to make you, when God going to show you who I am, when God going to draw you closer, sometime before he bring you closer, he take you farther. See, you don't understand the prodigal son had to go away to appreciate what he had. And sometimes you got to go away from God when you call calling on God. But God said, in order for you to appreciate me when you get back, you got to get away. Because right now, I'm blessing you right now. You can't see me. I'm moving in your life and you can't see me. I'm giving you all this and you can't see me. Let me take, let you fall backwards. Let me cause your car to break down. Let me cause your friction to come in your house. Let me cause maybe you can see me when you can't never see me when I never left you or forsake you, but you can't see me. Oh, glory to God. Y'all out. Y'all with me? And the problem is that when you begin to go through, you begin to pray when you be together and say, God, I see you. God, I see you. But you're too busy sitting in the devil, but you can't see God. He said, nah, nah, that ain't what I want you to say. I want you to see me. Because I give and I take away. I hold back. If I open the door, can't no man show up. When I close, can't no man open. Let me tell you, the devil has not that power. All he can do is talk about what he can do, but he can't do nothing unless I give him permission. But when you don't understand me, you begin to, let me take you down some more because you ain't getting it. I'm still here. He said, God, he said, I'm still here. Amen. Then all the time, you just couldn't see me. Amen. Until you got sick. The stuff not going wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. God love you so much till you take you through so you can see him. God like the model. God like to see his show. God like to show off his power. Like oh, God like to do stuff that everybody can see you like to get around with everybody that know that that's the God. God gets you to play. Can't nobody help you but him. And he'll show, he don't show up. He was already there. But now you recognize it. Before you couldn't recognize it. Right now you ain't recognizing it. Right now you ain't recognizing it. You be praising. You be lifting them up. Say, God, you my healer. You my way maker. Because I've been sick before you heal me. I've been down before you bring me up. God, I've been through some things 
rubbing a disc and you was my God. God said, all this stuff you say you experienced, but yet you don't know it. God. And it's something to be in church all your life and then been through hell and back. Oh, y'all ain't said that. We sitting there hit up in the hell and back. And still don't know it. Woo! Ah, yeah, yeah. We didn't pay when a doctor could do nothing for me. God, he wouldn't let the doctor come see me. And God wouldn't even reveal it to me. God, God didn't let me went through and let me deal with this pain, this ache. And after a while, I said, God, I can't do nothing else but trash you. What should I do? He said, go to the doctor and let him do that. Because now you acknowledge me. Because you never seen me when I was there for you to do whatever you need me to do, but you can't see me. Glory, 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 glory. See, you think God got to show up when He never leave you for sake. He always see you, but you always see Him. And all the time you think you see Him when you think you get something to satisfy you. Woo, Jesus. And sometimes that be a counterfeit God. That don't really be God. A lot of things that make you happy, that ain't God. Because it don't make you praise God. It don't make you worship God. It don't make you give God praise and give him glory. And make you wake up at the midnight night of hour and say glory to God. God, I thank you. Oh, you don't recognize when you wake up and your lights are still on. And they could have been off when you never had none. And you wake up and say, God, thank you. I got lights in my house. God, I give you praise, I give you glory. God, thank you for this mattress because I used to sleep on the floor. God, I give you praise, I give you glory. So you spent all of your life getting to know him. You got people, you got people 80 and 90 said God still taking them through. Man, if you ain't learned nothing by now, you 80 and 90 years old. What God prepare you for? Nothing but heaven. <laughs> what you talking about? God taking you through something. Man, you 69 years old. Man, come on, man. Come on. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Man, you 69 years old. God just making me. He making you. How long are you going to take you to get to know him, man? What's wrong with you? When you going to be made, man? Glory, 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 glory. And being made ain't nothing but understanding God. Yes, God. His ways ain't my way. He take me through some. I don't know why I'm hurting like this, but God know why. Let me see. Let me do a challenge check. Now I need to check with this devil. But then when I check with this devil, I'm still going through. I say, God is in control. Because I learned how to trust in Jesus. I learned how to depend on the Lord. He is my provider. He's my weight maker. He's my keeper. And you still learning this? I hear people say, yeah, God got me going through this. And he's and he been making me because I'm a preacher. Man, you 89, man. Where you going to preach at? In the bed, the person next to you, that's all? You letting time go by on you and you talking about God going to use you, don't you know? You, you're using days old. So you better read your Bible. There's people in the Bible that showed up and you never heard their name again. They played their part and their part was over. <laughs> See, one thing about you, you don't know if you played your part yet. You don't know if you done done what God had you do and now God blessing you because you already fulfilled your purpose. You still going around, don't even know your purpose, still don't know why I'm dealing with You still don't know nothing. And all of this, all you need to know is who God is. And when you know who God is, he order your steps. And when he order your steps in the, in the mouth, you say, thank you. When he order you in the back, you say, glory. When he take you to the city, you say, hallelujah. When he bring you back up, you say, hey, I knew it was you. And that's 
to rest in the Lord. How are you growing? Are you over 50? And thank you on the Father's will. No, you reap it, what you done sowed. And you know it was a cause and effect. And what you build is what you're living through. Because if you didn't build it, you wouldn't be living through it. But you don't want to take ownership. You don't spoil folks and did things your kid. Oh my God, stop in the whole back. And now your kids are spoiled and messed up. And you talking about what I did? You the one did. You can pray all day. But you did that for some mercy. Because you made that devil. Because you didn't show him go. And you were dealing with some stuff yourself. Yeah, you did the best you had, but your best wasn't good enough. Because instead of seeking to believe, you've been seeking God. Now what about it? You got to redeem the time. The things you got to learn, man. You got to catch up. You got to understand that some things you can't do nothing about it. Take God. That when you be saying, God, I'm confessing, God, I did it. I messed up. I should have whooped their behind every time they smiled. God, I should have bit on them every time. You should have did just like you said, but I didn't. But you won't own up to nothing. And that's what folks say, God, made because you don't want to own up. You don't want to own up and confess to God. So God can go in and work it. Because you did your part. But you didn't do it godly. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. Woo. You took them to church, but you complained around them. No, some things you can't, you're not supposed to do around certain folk. Because they pick up on it. Glory to God. Especially when you learn, you're still taking in stuff. People think you learn in school, you know, life teach you. And if you're around some wrong people, you're going to be taught wrong. And so, no matter how much your house, and if your house ain't stern, if your house ain't stern, if your house ain't stern, how that take them? And everything you talk don't mean nothing. Because your house wasn't stern. It wasn't a solid foundation. It wasn't godly. Because you had other stuff going on. That they had no business coming into the holies of holies. They had no business coming to my argument, my fuss, my struggles. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. They shouldn't know nothing about that. Ooh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all look at me like that. I'm about to hit something. Ain't it real stuff? Ain't God, uh, and why? Because you got to come to point. You're born and not is to know God. So you, you all made. But you got some parts that you need to be made by God. He's the creator. And still you give in to him. And, uh, yeah, and confess up to you. And begin to allow him. How many know your steps supposed to be ordered by the Lord? No, how many know it ain't everybody's steps? He said a good man's steps. So I got to be good in order for God to order my steps. I got to be good with the word. I got to be good in prayer. I got to be good in study. I got to be good and faithful to God. And to put him above all of us. My children, my everything. Because I'm doing more damage than good because I'm not being godly. I'm not helping them, I'm destroying them. And I'm spoiling them to a world that don't care nothing. That a world that don't care nothing about. You got prostitutes on the street that you would say came from a good home. Was it a good home? 
what do you call good? Because you bought them all the games they want, they want name brand clothes. And bought them their first car. You call that good? Y'all ain't saying much. And gave them every, something every time they piled it. Rewarded them when they did bad. Agreed with them when they was wrong. Never was a parent, but was their best friend. I'm not your friend. I'm your daddy. Hate me. But the more you live, you're going to learn to love me. I could deal with the hate. Because I know what I'm telling you is right. And eventually you're going to come back and tell me you love me. And you thank me. Because I did it God way. And not the people way. Oh glory to God. You don't know God enough where you got to do it God's way. You don't know you got to do it God's way. Don't you know you get ruined to the devil? Because you listen to your mind. And your mind ain't right. And you listen to your feelings. And your feelings lying to you. Because they're coming from your mind. And your mind ain't been renewed yet. How you think you get upset? Ain't God good? Amen. Ain't God good? Amen. Ain't God good all the time? <laughs> so why you ain't good all the time? If God good to you all the time, why you ain't good all the time? Because you got your own mind. And it's not a godly mind. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Look at your neighbor, see what I'm working with. Don't look too long because he might mad. Ain't God good. Y'all not. And, and you got to begin to understand that, that you got to begin to change some things that don't start with your mind. Because your mind is corrupt. See, you don't want to confess your mind corrupt. That's why the Bible says it's got to be renewed. It's corrupt by your upbringing and by your TV and your commercials and the way they pour life out to you. It's corrupt. You seek your things other than the kingdom and getting mad at God because he don't give them to you. And you know you ain't seek first to kingdom heaven right and say, we're all other things to be had. How you going to pray to God about something when you know you ain't doing what you're supposed to do? Oh, I know why, because that's the way you raise your children. I, mean, I shouldn't have said that, but. Huh? Ain't did everything they supposed to do. Room, room look like it's, look like you're at the dump. And you taking them out to eat. Huh? Bathroom ain't been clean. Garbage about to run over and their duties ain't been done. And you taking them to the game. This is better, this is better. You tell them if you want to go to get clean your room. You, you ain't going to the game because your room ain't clean. You know what I'm I don't care if you go ahead and clean it now. I'm not teaching you nothing. Ain't that real? You know what I'm But what I'm, I'm going to get this straight because you got to do your mind. Is, is, the enemy is coming through your mind. That's why you can't really appreciate God. You got to know God. Because if you don't know God, the devil always get room. Oh, glory to God. When God is saying, I don't want you, what you're going through, I want you to get to know me. And what makes it hard for you to get to know me, you got an adversary. It would be a smooth selling if I took you down and you didn't know nobody but me. But you know the devil too. Because you're raised in a world that's wicked. And your thoughts are not clear. And, and I wish they had a, a, a Charlie Hoochie. That's a crazy house, ain't it? I wish they had a spiritual crazy house. 
I think we all have to visit and get a checkup. <laughs> ain't God good? Because some things we be thinking that just ain't God. And it don't make God move. And we've been saved for, and been in church for a long time and still don't know that. And got the nerve to go down in prayer. Ain't clean your room. Ain't praise God through the storm. Ain't acknowledge him as being your way maker. And then you got the nerve to come out and tell me, can I go to the game? <laughs> Asking God to do something when you know you ain't done what you supposed to do. And the word of God instructs you what to do. That's why I don't like Bible scholars. I like Bible scholars, but I don't, don't say what I don't like. I mean, I don't, I don't understand because they'll read something and do the opposite and quote something and do the opposite. Then you get read that. I'm mad at you. Because <laughs> you just quote something, you ain't living yourself. Trust the Lord. Lean not to your understanding. How you gonna tell me something? You're just confused. How you confused? When you just read, trust the law. Oh, Jesus. Y'all with me? Y'all know how? Y'all with me? How you gonna quote something to me and you mad? Oh, glory to God. That's confusing. Not only to the person, the person that's quoting is confused, is spiritual confusion. God not author of confusion. When you can't trust him. In the midst of circumstances, that's confusion. Do you know what confusion is? When everything ain't lining up. So when you ain't agreeing with God, you're in confusion. And the devil's out of confusion. Oh, Jesus. And when you know anything about God, God has nothing to do with confusion. If you have a problem uh, uh, about your finances and me being your provider, I can't deal with you. If you have a problem with me making a way for you, and I can't deal with you because that's confusion. When you want me to move in your life, but then you complain about this, I can't deal with you because that's confusion. Why God ain't telling Because you're confusing. You say he's your Lord, he's your Savior. Then next me, he said, Lord, where you at? He said, I'm right here. I told you I'd never leave you up and take you. The enemy knows if I keep him confused, God ain't gonna move. Because God can't get in confusion. His word won't let him get in confusion. That's why I keep a household confused. A husband and wife against each other. But children manipulate one parent to get all of them. Because he know in the fusion, God can't enter in. Ooh. Y'all ain't saying much. Ain't that real stuff? And, and why? Because when you know the word, you know the word is like it's straight. He said, don't move to the left or to the right. But as long as you got that mind, and freelancing, and you listen to every thought that's the enemy and yours because it ain't been transformed into the likeness of Christ. That's confusion. Even when I don't understand, I got to give him praise. I get to go. Even when I don't like what you said, I got to agree with my adversary quickly. I'm not, de- I'm not dealing with you, I'm dealing with God. I'm not dealing with demons, I'm dealing with God. I'm not dealing with, uh, I'm dealing with God. And as long as I lie to with God, they had no power over me. But when I veer off to the left a little bit, I got to stay in line with God. My, li- my life is to stay in line with God. My life is not really to deal with, I deal with demons because I deal with people. But my walk is just straight God. Pleasing God. And the thing is, when you ain't pleasing God, and you ain't lined up with God, and you try to deal with the devil, 
That's why he can kind of attack you. All your good deeds. He kind of attack you. Every good. That's why I said when you do one thing, you do good. Help somebody. It, it, it's like everybody turn against you. He can't act you. Why he can't act? Because you ain't lined up with God. Resist the devil. You can't resist him. Draw close to God and resist the devil. Guess what he'll do? Stay, other words say, stay lined up with God. Keep praising God. Keep worshiping God. Keep glorifying God. God's still good. God's still in control. God's still got all power. He's still my healer. He's still my way maker. My wrestle is not with the devil. My wrestle is with my flesh. Because my flesh want to go against God. My mind want to think things that's not going to help. Stay on the thing. That's why I got to control my thoughts. Because the, my thoughts are running off where they're supposed to be. Because my mind is like on its own, you know? <laughs> and it go back to old ways. The world way. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, they better not say that to me again. I'm going to slap them. You say, show Leah, let them come close. Ain't brought nothing to suggest you. Because guess what? You ain't stand. It's not by God. You ain't fight. You ain't stand. You ain't fighting to stay lined up with God. Because if you fight to stay lined up with God, when that thoughts come, when your mind come, and, and even though it's influenced by spirit, you'll fight not that you'll bring in a suggestion. Because you want to you please God. Y'all know how? But when you ain't, when your mind, when you, when you're not spiritually strong enough, that mind getting your feelings all the time. Y'all know how? When you're not spiritually strong enough, your mind is what you go by. And, and your mind can't be trusted right now. Y'all know? Your mind can't be trusted right now. Every thought that come about your mind that's not God, it can't be trusted. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying much. Every thought that you have about your future, about your life, about your service, it can't be trusted. And if you look at it, it's going against the, the word of God. Every one of them thoughts going against what God said. And the mind so smart, sometimes it ease you in with a God thing and then it bring you the trouble thing. That mind's up, man. Ain't God good. I was thinking on them things, then I got on them things, then I got on that thing, then I got on other things. And none of them things led me to a good thing. Because I was tricked by my adversary to get my mind to go to work. And now my mind go to work and he stepped up and went to somebody else's house and I'm still thinking. And you up there rebuking the devil. The devil said, I've been gone about two weeks. <laughs> That's all you. That's why some of you think the devil don't leave. Because you don't know the difference. That's all you. That demon done went over to somebody else's house. Because <laughs> you don't know the power of the mind. I rebuked it. I called on Jesus. I did everything. It wouldn't leave. Now that's God, that's against the word of God. That can't be true. Amen. Amen. So that had to be you wrestling with your mind. And you ain't know it was your mind. Because your mind got a mind of his own. Because <laughs> you ain't bringing on subjection. You're not training yourself. Because you don't know it needs to be trained. Because you got this personality that came through your mind. And your ways are built through your mind. Because your mind is a computer. And everything was got in your mind make you react. So your mind is really controlling you, when you think you controlling you, because you're supposed to be spiritual. 
Oh, yeah, well, oh, sure. Lord, oh, yeah, well, sure. So I'm happy you're ready to curse everybody out. Even though you don't say it out your mouth, you say it in your mind. Your mind cuts it up. <laughs> Y'all, ain't that true? That mind be cussing and talking about people don't. And you be saying, that ain't right. <laughs> but you ain't caught all that bird that back out of my zone. That's why he said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Until your mind get renewed, it can't be trusted. No maturity. I'm just thinking about maturing. They went out to the club and got drunk last night. I wonder if they made it home. You ain't got no sleep. They sleeping all day. You don't bump your head. I'm going to sleep. Y'all know how? Ain't that real stuff? What the mind behind you racing? Because instead of saying, God got it. God in control. God know how much I can bear. Spiritually, bringing the thoughts and the subjection. Bring that. They're going to be all right. God got it because he knows the angels kept around. They're going to get it up. They're going to get it together. You know how? Instead of doing that, not, the mind just got you all messed up. Is that the truth? Is it my house? Oh, glory to God. Because you're controlled by your mind. A lot of times you think it'd be the spirit, but it'd be your mind. That's how manipulative it is. Because the spirit ain't going to make you worry. A lot of times you praying about something God already answered. Because your mind telling you to pray. How are you going to let God go and run you say, God, I know what you need for you to ask. Why you end up with a praise, but you end up with a prayer? Because it came from the mind. Woo, woo. Uh, because you got to stop trusting your mind. I'm going to give you a scripture right quick. Uh, and it's continue. This is a continuation from last week. But I'm going to give you Ephesians 2 and 1 and 3. And that's a scripture I read all the time. Ephesians 2, chapter 2 and 1. Start from there. Ain't God good? Or maybe I get to lay some hands or slap somebody today or something. Ain't God good? Somebody say, I can use a slap right now. <laughs> slap some sense into me. <laughs> ain't God good? Say hello. Ain't God awesome? Ain't God uh, ain't mighty? Y'all in the house? Y'all getting this? Y'all believe this? You got to think. You got to think. I think on these. Every time your mind ain't thinking on these things. You can't trust it. Ain't God good? You around the house, sitting in the house, you, you ride home from work, and that mind go to trick you. That mind go to trick you. By the time you get to the house, you mad as a junkyard dog. And that mind done got you right up thinking about something, and by the time you get home, you rolling eyes and everything. I can't do it. And you mad, because that mind has you fired up. You got home arguing at the wife and everything. You remember when you said that you only love me because this reason? Ain't God good? Let me tell you something. That mind that had you all messed up, didn't it? Oh, Ain't that The woman back, I ain't cooking nothing. He want me to cook. Who you think I am? That, that mind go to get up. She gonna say, I ain't cooking nothing. Matter of fact, he wants some, he wants some chicken. I'm gonna cook some pork chop. <laughs> he gonna eat what I feed him. That man, that man, he get home, he get, he already mad because he's talking about, ooh, boy. The man got him going. He think he get some fried chicken with some mashed potatoes and some string beans. He think he's gonna eat. He get home, he smell pork chop. <laughs> he all mine already had him messed up coming home. He all he think about chicken. Oh, they want me some good fried chicken. My wife put that seed on. Well, she knows what she be doing. She good, boy. Oh, thank you for my wife. That, that's the mind. Get in there and up with some pork. I don't want that. 
They're going to fight. That mind work both of y'all. Because you trust your mind. You know He cheating. He ain't never cheated a day in life. He cheating. I'm cheating. She ain't never cheated dead or life. She don't know what cheating is until you brought it to her attention. <laughs> Come from a good, faithful, church-going family. Ain't know what, what, don't know what cheating is. Cheating, you can't do cheating. You can't cheat me. You can't cheat me married. Oh, yes, you can. But she didn't know it to you. <laughs> and now you say, I don't know why she like that. She like it because you taught it to her. Now, some of y'all, you know, it's a whole other ball. Y'all talk to each other. Wait, wait, wait. Hallelujah! Oh, Ain't God good. But where all that came in? All the trouble started right here. Thinking about something you shouldn't have been thinking about. It's something you can be in the same house with somebody and you think everything good. And they ain't happy because of the way they think. You know what I'm saying? Thinking how you going, you be thinking everything good. Next thing you come home, ain't nothing, there ain't nothing in the house. She done took everything. The cow, she even took the stool out. <laughs> she took everything. Because <laughs> you thought everything was good. Because she was thinking something else, you was thinking one. Y'all know how? My mind ain't nothing to play with now. You know what? You got to start thinking. You got to start thinking with your mind and be moved by your spirit. Because the only way to get the things of God is through the spirit. You can't get the things of good, things of God with the natural mind. And the reason why some of us ain't got it because we think it natural. And we're trying to act spiritual. We're really natural. Because if we were spiritual, we'd be thinking on these things. You know how? And we wonder why God ain't moving because we ain't thinking on these things and we ain't lined up with God that our words are being pure without being confused. Either you being blessed or you stressed. You can't be blessed and stressed. You know how? There's too many people around here talking about I'm blessed, but you ain't happy. You can't be blessed and ain't happy. Just like you can't serve two masters. You either love the one or hate the other. God tell me something. You can't serve two masters. You either love the one and hate the other. But get me to flow in your life. It cause the blessing to come in your life. You got to love one master. Because I'm not the author of confusion. I will not come in your confused life. Where you still being molded at 95. And you still don't know who I am at 52. Still don't have a clue that I've told it you for 20 years. And you still don't know me. I brought you out of situations. There ain't no way you could have got it. And you still don't know me. I brought you to nothing. To everything you have. And you still don't know me. What is going to take for you to get to know me? It ain't about knowing no one else. It's about knowing him. Because if you don't know him, you'll be confused. Because life brings balance. Life brings pain. Life brings hurt. It just happens in this earth. As long as you're in the earth, you're going to have to deal with things. As long as you're in this temple. And if you don't deal with them properly, you will destroy yourself. Because without God, you can't do it. <laughs> because you will reap what you so. Whew. 
I call it cause and effect. You act it up, and this is the effects of it. That's the act of the way God created the earth. And if you don't allow God to come and interrupt what you have made and to make something good out of it and make something positive out of it, you're in trouble. If you keep listening to that mind and that devil and your feelings and emotions, talking about your five senses, and I'm just human, you're going to be in trouble. Glory to God. Oh, read that, sister. I had a scripture, didn't I? Oh. And you have these quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein time has she walked according to the court. Hold on, right there. So you've been quickened. What well, that means, your spirit, you've been quickened in your spirit. <laughs> Do it say your spirit was dead, but not alive. It's been quickened. Amen. He breathed life back into you. Yes, From the beginning, he breathed into man and not made him a living soul. <clears throat> so he quickened you back. And now you're back alive spiritually. Now what God said, come a time when you only worship me in spirit and truth. See, you, until you know the truth, you can't just worship God. What I mean by that, people are worth, they, they're worshiping God when they really can't worship God because they don't know the truth. That's why you see less power as, as believers. Because every believer should have the power over principal power of the doctor and cast out demons. But you can't do those things in the work of God in a general, just a believer, if they don't know the truth. They think it's anointing. They think it's a calling. No, it's a believing and trusting God and knowing God. But when you're confused about God and don't have a full knowledge of God, then you can't operate in that. You know how? So now you've been quickened in your spirit. You already had a mind. You already had a sinful nature, which is a soul. You know how? He quickened something that was late dormant. That was your spirit. So now your spirit is alive. Now you no longer rely on your mind. Because your nine, mind is from your sinful nature. Everything you've been taught from a child comes from your sinful nature. Everything you know that you think you've been telling this smart back came from your sinful nature. Is you going to cheat somebody, mistreat somebody, or hurt somebody, abuse somebody, or kill yourself? Because <laughs> of destruction. All the destruction came from the sin from a man. After man fell, all the death start coming, sickness start coming, everything start coming because he was a he was going by the mind. You know how? But now you've been quicker. He didn't quicken your mind because you was already living, and they were still building temples. And they were doing everything. Technology was building, so it wasn't the mind that he was building that he was quicker. In my house. But let, as you even got saved, you still understand what the quickening was. And even though you've been born in the spirit and now you got the spirit, but you don't live by the spirit because you're still operating in the mind. Every situation you get came from a thought. Either it was yours or it was the enemy. You know how? Come and read the rest of us. What is that? Uh, listen to that. So your mind now is according to the world. Every dollar you make, every career you want, everything you desire is a, it comes from the world. Y'all in the house? Yeah. You could have had a hut and, and a, a bathroom with it. Don't forget that. And a kitchen and a bedroom. And if you wouldn't have been made by the world, you would have been happy. You would have got up every morning, went hunting, got your food, stopped by the, by, by the spring, got your water. Came home and skipped to happy. Because you're going to eat today. 
and sat down on your wooden bench with got a got a something under to hold it up because one of the legs broke, and you would have been happy. But by you having the course of the world and using the mind of the world, you call success stuff. And you don't see nothing. You think that your life and you being successful and getting all this stuff, you think that's 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 of the world. That's of oh, your sinful nature. That's why you bring your pressure. That's what bring you trying to prove something to somebody. You understand? Know because you don't understand, you still operate with that mind that came from your corrupt life. You don't got a pure spirit, but you got a corrupt mind. And you still operate from your mind. Y'all ain't saying much. Y'all in the house? Ain't gonna do Because we gotta know this. Because until you begin to understand this, you, the enemy won't be able to get you like he get you. Notice the enemy comes spiritually, but he don't come at your spirit, he come at your mind. Because once he bring a thought, then that thought connect to your thought from your sinful nature, and then you begin to act up. Y'all with me? Come on, read the rest of this. What is it? The, the, who's that? Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Who that? By, the, by who? It's Tater. It's Satan. It's the devil. By the prince of the air, so he can blow by any time. Give you a thought. And get you any time because he's the prince of the air, so he come by and put a thought in your head and connects to your mind. He don't connect to your spirit. He connects to your mind. And that's when everything just go to pieces. All your shout, all your praise, all your worship has been bound up by your mind. And no matter what strips you here, no matter what nobody tell you, your mind say this is what it is and this is how you're going to act. And that's what you do. Y'all understand what Unless we start taking a few minutes and do a deliverance on you. And you'll get out your mind and get in your spirit. You didn't get out no demon. You got out your mind. And you got in your spirit. Because your mind got in your soul. And you weren't acting up. Because your feelings and emotion was involved. But once you got out your mind, we start doing the living. We start calling Jesus. Say hallelujah. You got out your mind got in your spirit. You said, oh, I feel better. I'm going to deliver. No, you ain't been delivered. You got out your mind. Because you've been delivered. You've been set free. You're a child of God. He can't house in there. He can oppress you, but he can't possess you. But until you get out your mind, you feel like everything was what it is. Y'all know how? Glory to God. Y'all with me? Because you got to begin to understand when you begin to get depressed and upset, it's all in your mind. And when you get in your mind, it takes a it takes a shaking or mercy of God to come by and get you out your mind. Y'all know how? There's nothing natural can happen, but everything happened was spiritual. Everything you couldn't see changed your reaction. Y'all know how? It wasn't the check that changed your, it wasn't the check that changed your day. It was the, the breakthrough in your mind that makes you start relaxing and feeling better. Cause you hadn't even rented the store yet. You ain't done nothing with it. You had just got paid and you ain't spent the dime. And you, all of a sudden you feel a release. Is it me here? And after a while, and where, where was the trap was? Where was it at? It was in your mind. So that means save as you is, sanctify, fill it with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I hope you start using some of it. We're speaking in tongues like you just, oh, like a seller. But you get in your mind and you like a brick. Glory to God. Because you can't trust it. 
And your mind most of the time tell you to do opposite what God requires you to do. God said, pray, hold your peace. The mind says, knock him in the face. Y'all know? Glory to God. Read the rest of what it says. So I might get somebody in here in a little bit. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. But now, now, now it's the spirit that work in the children of disobedience. He quick out it. Now it's the spirit now, which is the devil that work in the children of disobedience. Now it's the spirit. Now he's saying, now the devil, a spirit of disobedience. So in other words, when a thought comes and spirit comes to make you disobey God. Now it's a spiritual thing. It used to be just our nature. But now we're under spiritual attack from the adversary that plays on our sinful nature and plays on our mind. You know how? So now we're in a different, now we're in a different category. Now we are spiritual beings and he can't get to our spirit because once God has sealed us with his spirit, he can't get to our spirit so he come at us through our natural mind. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You know how? Because he can't get our spirit. He can't get our spirit. I feel something in my spirit. No, you deserve the stuff in your spirit but your mind is confusing you. It's not a clear connection by you understanding because your mind is at work and your spirit is at work. The spirit telling you something, but your mind is confusing. So you hesitate to say it. Because your mind is still at work. You're still listening to your mind. When it performs your spirit, you can say it without even hesitating. Because your mind ain't in the way. But when your mind gets in the way, they might look at me funny and they might think I'm crazy. They might think that I'm going to listen to it. They don't care. They know I just do something myself. So I'm like, well, get something myself. I tell them this, they'll think, they, they, they tell me, who, who you think you talk to? You just got to be one of the same thing. And that's why I can't tell them nothing because if I tell them that, they, they think I'm. So you can't really operate in your spirit like you really God want to use you. Because your mind in the way. Yeah, you know, all these gifts in the house cannot operate because of the mind. The steps you need to make to get your finances in order, the voice you need to hear, the cause they to go for you and open up door for you, your mind in the way. And your mind is louder than your spirit. Because that's when you begin to get depressed, mad, and upset. God is speaking to you, but your spirit is speaking. Hold on. Hold on. But the mind is way louder. you going down. You ain't getting nothing. You finna fail. Ain't nobody like you. Why are you always throwing that in there? Ain't nobody gonna help you. <laughs> that never always throw that in there. Look, I don't care if nobody help me. They like me, but I just need some help. <laughs> so you you could have left that out, man, because I really didn't even hear that. <laughs> you know? But you got to stop listening to your mind. Why? Because you got to shut your mind up so you can hear from your spirit. Until you shut your mind up, you can't hear from your spirit clearly. And that's why you think God ain't talking to you. That God is going to talk to your talk to your spirit through the Holy Spirit. But if your spirit is not strong enough to carry the, the, the volume up to your Amen. mouth, then you can't speak it. Because your volume too low. Your power too low. And when you do hear it, it's hard for you to just communicate it because your mind get in the way. Well, what if I spit this and I do this and nothing don't happen? What if I do this and I do this and, and, and this break down. Y'all know how? Why well, I don't have to do this and, and I don't have enough gas for the week. What if I do this and, and, and I don't have enough, enough, enough food? You need to go on a fast then. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> so God speaking to you, but everything gets stopped right there. 
You know what I'm because that, what the natural mind that's been programmed by the world is making sense out of this. <laughs> you know So, so I'm, I'm struggling with getting in the actually the move of God, getting into my spirit, to get in the place where my spirit can control my life. Because I'm not recognizing that my mind is keeping me from getting in a pure spirit, connected with the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God operating in my life. Because I'm not recognizing my enemy. My old worldly mind. Everybody come up with a worldly idea. And think it's God. When God say, whatever's worth, I pay. I supply you what you need. I want you to go build a wall. I'm going to have them give you the material. I'm going to have you, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to give you what you need. And you go build a wall. You around here trying to build a wall and you ain't God ain't giving you nothing. Because <laughs> you're trying to get it with a natural mind. The spirit is speaking, but you're trying to get it with a natural mind. Y'all in the house? Come on, give me the rest of it. Hold it right there. Said it's not now. That time pad. This ain't none of us now. Now, <clears throat> this ain't none of us now. We spiritual people now. We got holes in our jeans. We got holes in it. We don't care. We just praising God. We just happy being saved. Cause we had no lust of the eye and no pride of life. Worry about it. We don't worry about how nobody say. We in love with Jesus. Listen what the scripture say. He said time passed. So that means that we don't put to be in that time now. Y'all in the house? We don't put to be in that time now where we worry about this and worry about that and wonder how we're going to get there. Because he said in time passed. We're children of God now. We belong to Jesus Christ. God supply our need. We're ambassadors of Jesus Christ. God giving us ideas that cost the world to give it to our booth. Every job we get, we're on assignment from heaven. We ain't there for the pay because the pay ain't about nothing, but God got us there doing what we need to do because he's in the bill, son. Because that's our mindset. That's what the scripture says say in the time past. Is it that time past yet in Rainbow? Huh? Time, in time past, we was people like lust and I and treated our world. That's how we were. But we ain't like that now. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't like that now. Tell that lying trick. But we ain't gonna talk about it. Ain't God good. You know you like <laughs> But it's saying you don't put me like that now. You should never be a person, a man or woman of God that know God and concerned by what you're gonna eat. And what you going with, and how are you going to do this? You, you should never be worried about that. Because he said, if I take care of the little field, I, I take care of you. But you can't get the kingdom to operate for you because you had a mind interfere, the worldly mind, the lust getting in the way. God is not God, he should lie. His hand not to show, he can't bless you. That ain't what the word say. So if you had a spirit, if you were lined up with God and not concerned about these things because you're getting to know God, you learn learning up with God, you, you, you loving God. You praising God. You worshiping God. Look here, whatever, whatever, you know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, whatever God lead me. You know, but I got to come out of this. But first, I got to break this mind. I can't break this mind because every time I try to break this mind, situations come up and I begin to react to my mind and not my spirit. But the day has got to be broken in the mind name of Jesus. We got to break that right now. Because it's time for us to get our blessing. It's time for us to live the life that God has given us. To he said, I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. I'm going to make you above and not beneath. I'm going to have men give it to your bosom. You need this, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to make somebody bless you with this. But how can I say somebody bless you when you think in the world? You'll turn it down. I don't want nobody to give me. Look, but God said, well, you need to change that mind. Because I don't for me to bless you, 
You can't mix this spiritual with this natural. You can't mix corrupt with incorrupt. You know how? You're trying to do, get things from God, but you got to work, let, let the mind control your, your, your life. The way you're thinking about it, you think about it through natural means. Is them in the house. In the house. Woo, Jesus. Ain't God good. I'm going to slap somebody today with this. No, this is going to be good. Ain't God and, and we say, God, what's wrong? God, why did this happen in my life? I trust you. I believe you. He said, but you don't know me. Because if you knew me, you wouldn't be asking me that. You'd be getting closer to me. You'll be praying me. I didn't bring this to destroy you. I bring this to come closer to me. What you're dealing with now was to be bringing you closer to me. But because you're allowing your mind to think that I forsake you, I can't bless you. Because what I'm using to draw close to, to bring you closer to me, you resisted me. You know you need me. You know you need me to open doors. You know you're not making the money. You know that I'm the way. You know that you need things to happen in your life for you to go forth in your life. And you know you can't do it and ain't nobody giving you nothing. You need, but only one you know that will give you something. You say, I'm the one that can make all things a part of him that believes. You say, you believe I can do it. But every time I try to draw you closer, you get resist me. Woo! Because you're still thinking dollar. You're still thinking worldly. Glory to God. I believe in miracles. Amen. I believe in miracles. Amen. If you believe in say hallelujah. hallelujah. I still believe in miracles. Amen. I know God more now in the in this in the lunchroom than I knew God when I was over there at the Walmart. I appreciate God more now than I did when I was because I know what he can do Amen. and I know what he will do. Amen. So I know he's God. Amen. So it didn't damage me. It drew me closer. Because I realized I can't do nothing without him. If he don't make a way, there is no way. If he don't open the door, there is no other door. It's not about the money, because it wasn't about the money when I was over there. It's not about the money. Why the hell? It was about God. Amen. So you can't tell me what God can't do. So he had to break me from the money thing and break me to the spiritual thing. He didn't have to keep me there. He just took me there. But when he have took you and shown you so many times that I'm moving for you, I'm blessing you, still depending on the world and mine. Credit report. Different stuff. How much you make? How you gonna manage this? If they give it to them, I'm taking it. I don't care if it's five thousand dollars a week. <laughs> Say, but God, Ooh. God make a way, boy. You hear me? God make a way. God make a way. You hear me? I don't ask him how much you to have. I tell him, he's giving it to me. All I want to know is who it approves. Because I ain't thinking about no money payment. I ain't thinking about how much I made. I'm thinking God. Why? Because I learned. God's a keeper. And he's able. But if God, all the things God took and you he ain't broke you from your mind yet? You know, been placed and did things that ain't no way you could have did it. Glory to God. 
But you go right back to your mind. Right back to your mind. Right back to your worldly mind. People got you. It's got a spirit of fear to go with it. People got you scared because you don't lost a couple of things. I'm going to lose some more, but I don't care. Because God able to restore. God able to replace. God, the mighty God. People say, why are you in there? Because I ain't into that. I can do that, but I ain't into that. I don't have a worldly mind. I don't have a worldly mind. I just do stuff because I want to. But I feel like God give me lips and liberty. I just jump up and do stuff. I don't worry about where I'm going to eat, where I'm going to stay. Because I know where I'm going to stay. Rather than that Sherlin 207. <laughs> 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 ain't God. Ain't God good. I'm going to get up in the morning, cut my little lights off, eat me some oatmeal, and be chill out and enjoy myself. Glory to God. Because why? I ain't got the mind of the world. And I'm just trying to break something down. Big time preacher will be living in a big house, big up. You go right ahead. Just let the Lord build a house. He's going to have to build this. <laughs> the build a building vain. Ain't me around me around here. Y'all know how? Depending on folk, they don't have a way to show up. And, you go in the house talking about, look, I just come by. I ain't come by to see you. I come by to pick up your own. <laughs> I got a house note, dude. I ain't got time. Pray <laughs> God. Every, every one of my servants about tired. Hey, God, good. Y'all come and say, we don't have a good time today. We're going to talk about time. Because I was looking around. Susan, your name wasn't on that last week. Billy, your name, where you be? You laid off or something? I got cash at. <laughs> Just because you ain't come to church, you still could have cash at a Zell or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Preacher, call How you doing? I just called to check up on you, and I see your tie wasn't in this week. <laughs> My car don't do. I ain't got time for you. <laughs> And then they throw that scripture with a man rob God. You just did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a world of mine. You trying to live and do some stuff. It ain't because it's God. It's because how people going to look at you. Ain't going to help you pay now, bill. Ain't going to drive now. Ain't going to put no gas in your car. Ain't gonna do nothing. And you still got that really mind. Want it because you want it and God bless you to get it. Don't get it because of people. Because they ain't gonna help you do nothing. You're right here struggling and coming and putting them two dollars in offer. Ain't God good. I'm talking about you, you got a house, no God understand. No, yeah, he understands you still got a world mind in the world. And I want to bless you where you have abundance, but I can't bless you because you're trying to rock, you won't do, you won't release the mind. Let me tell you something. And I'm gonna get there. to release the mind, you gotta make sacrifices. You can't get out this mind thing without making sacrifices. I'm telling you. There ain't no way to get out of this mind thing. This is one of the hard. You cannot get out of this mind thing without sacrifice. Because everything you do, the, the mind going to fight against it. Because God going to lead you and tell you something. You're going to do what God said to do. And it's going to go every against the natural. It's going against the natural. It's going to the natural way of life. Until you break that, you cannot. And that's why people, it's hard for people to break that. Because they can't d disconnect from the natural way of world, what they've been taught. By life and living. So they can't make the sacrifice they need to make to come into abundance. Woo! Because and how many of God give us abundance? But the hardest thing for people to do is to come out the natural to get in abundance. Natural mind. Can't do it. Because you got making sense of stuff. You can't do it. Y'all know? Spirit speak. 
It's real slow, real low. low. You get an idea. Just a, it just comes out like, a, like an idea. You say, do this. Just an idea. He just throw it at you. And then you start making sense of it. With the worldly sense you got. And you don't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. Because it don't make sense. Why would God, and I'm just saying, I ain't trying to get checked. Why would God tell me to get my whole check when he know I got bills? I can't disconnect. I can't disconnect. I want God to bless my business. I want God to bless my house. But God tell me to do so. I can't, I can't disconnect. I just can't disconnect. I need God to move for me. I need God to bless me in this area. And God, all of a sudden, this, this thought just come to me. This thought can't be of the devil. The only way I'm going to get it, I got to disconnect from my mind. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. I can't disconnect. You hear me? You can't disconnect. Because what God telling you to do to disconnect don't make no worldly sense. Woo! Hey, that feel good. The kingdom stuff now. Ain't got good. And God now gave you more opportunities than one to disconnect. Ain't no preacher preached on nothing. Ain't nobody saying nothing to you about doing it. It just was an idea that came. God said, in order for you to get where I want you, where you want to get, you got to disconnect. You want a healing? You want a miracle? You want me to move for you? Heal an idea. It don't be a command, be an idea. Because he already knows it's just an idea until you be make it a, make it real. And you know it can't be the devil telling you to do it because the devil ain't going to tell you to do nothing like that. But this ain't making no sense. Everything the devil tell you makes sense. That's why he gets you all the time. Because it makes worldly sense. They didn't come by and speak. So I didn't speak. That make good sense. They didn't bring me no food. I ain't bring me no food. That make plenty of sense. <laughs> you know how? Everything, everything worldly is what you call making sense. And the only thing going to disconnect you from the world is when it don't make no sense. But you're a sense person. God says, stand up. Your leg killing you. Your leg killing you. I rebuke you, devil. I'm not standing up and fall so nobody can see me. Now that makes sense. <laughs> you know how? So many times you don't miss your healing and you miss your deliverance because it because you didn't make sense of stuff. And you talk to somebody else about it, they say, Yeah, I understand. But that was your healing. That was your blessing. That was your bringing out. Woo, Jesus. Boy, there's some good teaching here. There's some beautiful teaching. And in real stuff. And, and until you be able to walk in God without using your worldly senses, which is corrupt and against God, it's difficult for you to get God to move. Ooh, hallelujah. Ain't God good? Boy, ain't God wonderful? I've been talking, yeah, I want to do this. You ain't going to be able to do that. Because you need a miracle. You need to move on. And if you can't listen to that idea that come to you, you'll never be able to do that. You make too much sense. You're a very beautiful, logical person. Yeah, you know, I want this over here, and I, I don't do this. I don't do that. Okay, well, what God say? He ain't say nothing because he's a see right? He gonna say, but it ain't gonna make no sense now. Huh? 
You get your pencil and paper, I go to writing stuff. Make your sense out of it. Thank him about doing it, the idea. And you look at it, it just don't make no sense. Can't do it. Because that's the only way to disconnect to get the miracle. You want God to move on your kid, you got to do stuff that just don't make no sense. Everybody going to talk about you. Everybody going to look at you crazy. But you got to do what you need to do. Because that's the only way God's going to straighten this thing out. God can't straighten this thing out by you making sense. It's corrupt. And it's come from the world. And it's tick for tat. It's tick for tat. Glory to God. Y'all know how? Y'all getting this here? Uh, because it, it's all everything you get. And it's, it's the only way, man. Somebody wants a miracle, a, 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 a miracle, a healing, or need God to want God to move in their finances, want God to, and they want something, but God got to give it to them. Man, they got to disconnect from the mind. That's why folks are stuck where they at. Because they refuse to disconnect. Oh, glory to God. You can be sitting around one day, God said, don't go. This is important. You got to be there. They want you to be there. God said, don't go. Then that man said, well, if I don't go, this may happen, this may happen, that may happen. Then let me go. That's the only thing that makes sense. Woo! Good gracious. This is good stuff. I'm trying to move on, but I'm trying to get somebody to catch this. Every time the idea come, it make you make sense. Don't you know if God says something, it don't matter how much it costs or what they say, it's going to go what God say. Amen. Then you hear the word say, if God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. And if God points something to me or give me something, don't you know I got to do it? Because I have disconnect from this natural. Because the natural ain't going to get it for me. If I keep doing it like this, I'm going to be old and bend over. And you know, some people get old, they don't work so hard, they be like this. That's hard work, that boy. You know what I mean when y'all say that? That's hard work, that boy. No, that's from working hard all your life. You know how? And them bones get stuff like that now. Amen. Y'all talking, I'm blessed. You can't hardly look at I'm blessed. That's going to work hard, but I don't want mine like that. Ain't God good? I want my supernatural. I got to release this mind here. Come on, give me the rest of this. Just let me get out here. I got to go. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Wow! The feelings of the flesh and the mind. Oh, God gave us five senses. Where you getting them from? You got that your history book. You got that from when they taught you about the senses of the body. Where you got that from? You was taught that by corrupt teachers. <laughs> corrupt world. And you make it like it's the Bible. And that's something you was taught. Touch. Feel. Smell. They gave it names and you accepted it. Oh, glory to God. When God said be led by the spirit, he don't say be led by the mind. He said be led by the spirit. And your mind leads you everywhere. Leads you in the wrong man, the wrong wife, the wrong house, and the wrong car. There ain't nothing right in your life. You know how? The wrong doctor, the wrong lawyer. Lawyer done took you for about $5,000. <laughs> and he didn't even call you. <laughs> you got the wrong everybody. 
Ain't God. Because you're making all the sense in the world. Y'all met people that's got all the sense. <laughs> got all the sense. Man. And you look at their life and say, you got all them sins. Why are you in this position you in? Because <laughs> they got sins. But they're worldly sins. And worldly sins you can't depend on. Anybody how? Because if you made a million and I do the same thing you did and I read your book, I should make a million too. If it made sense. But all you did was got commission from me and I ain't made no money with your pyramid. Ain't <laughs> God good. Everybody ain't rich. <laughs> And I saying, hey, what God got for you, for you. Um, you get an idea from God. But it's in your mind. And you still relying on your mind. Everybody you don't like is in your mind. Everything you don't like and every person you don't like is in your mind. I don't like this because they don't like the way they look. Cause why? Because when I grew up, oh yeah? Some of y'all better not go to nobody's house and throw away no food. Look at that, don't make no sense. Look at them throw away that food. <laughs> Somebody hungry out there. It used to be me. <laughs> they got good. It's a shame they throw away that. They got good. Ain't that real? Because cause you grew up with that. You, your mind is corrupt. And even some things you've been taught, you're doing something that you don't even believe in your spirit don't even come supposed to exist. Yeah. But you were, it making sense and, and, and you got one of your house was still making sense. And it's corrupt. And it's destroying you. Woo! Y'all quiet in here now. You know what I You think you helping. But it ain't spiritually right. That's too tough right now. And you can't break loose from the natural mind. Because it makes sense. But you know it ain't right. But it's just right if I do this. No, it's not right. It's not godly right. You know how? Because y'all call right stuff that ain't godly. That's why I wish you would come preaching to me. I'm going to look at your role mind. <laughs> I don't even know how to roll mind. I, gotta... <laughs> I know why you're having all this trouble. I know why you're going through that stuff. I know why you're dealing with that. But I can't tell you when you're dealing with your mind. Because you might want to hit me. And then my mind wake up. Because <laughs> my mind is asleep right now. But you better rather slap me. And my mind be quicken. <laughs> no, I just did that. I just did that. Hey God, good. Pray God, but I can't keep my mind on the subjection. So that's why I keep my mind asleep. That's why I won't tell you. Hey God, because I really, unless I'm led to tell you, because I really want to tell you something. Because you're in your mind right now, but I don't want no confusion with you. Because you mess around here and allow your mind to think I'm going to stand up here and turn the cheek. And I'm going to turn the cheek. But they didn't say what to do after. <laughs> I think he's gonna leave it up to me. <laughs> this team. Ain't God good. So you got to you, when you whatever going on, I can tell you what's going on in your life. But I can't tell you because it connects to your mind. 
Så var det ikke til, men nå, mørk, men det er ikke så Because you're not spiritually connected. And sometimes you think you want to know stuff you really don't want to know. Because you know it's not biblical. Some things you know that you think is right that you know ain't right. You understand that? Ain't God good. But your mind override your spirit. Well, y'all let me let We get y'all another scripture. Y'all look at me like y'all. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. What does it say? But not deceive, evil communications, corrupt good manners. Y'all heard that? Y'all heard that? Ooh, that's good. Ain't that good? Y'all should have y'all should have licked that with steak right there. Y'all should have said, oh, that was good. Because your mind make you communicate wrong stuff. And it corrupt good manner. The manner is God's manner, God's word. And when you don't you when you can't use God's work, it corrupts it. Because you allow your mind to make you speak stuff that you shouldn't be speaking. And you got the manner in you. You got the word of God in you. You got the power in you. You got the anointing in you. But you corrupts it. You got the power to overcome. You got the power to defeat whatever you're up against. But you corrupt it because your mind is still operating in the world. Until you can recognize that the lust of the eye and the pride of life. Come from the world. You know how? Y'all with me? I don't need. I, I got to have my makeup. I got to have my my my. I got to have my stuff. My nails and stuff got to. What happened to all them years when they didn't have all that? Where that come from? Where baby, you got to have all this stuff, them nails and everything. Now you expensive. <laughs> my God, I can't afford no one. <laughs> You got to have all this stuff and affect your emotion and your feelings. It affects you. You know how? It affects how you feel about yourself. Where you think that come from? You know the, the mother used to come to the church with her face all ashy? And she had to have her stop. She didn't care about nothing. Else. She didn't shout at me. The mother come to lift God up. Come to pray God. They got time for that food, man. Ain't God good. Dress by surprise, got her long skirt on, pray God, split it up. Watch she get through there and it splits up, don't come up too far. <laughs> Ain't none of the emotional things that, that may affect them. Glory to God. But because we allow the mind to grow in our lust and lust and enticements and not recognize it, it got worse. We literally need these things. We literally feel we need them. Got to have rims. And this and that. Got to have this and that. And you don't know that that's the lust of the eye and the pride of life. And you want God to move supernatural when you're not operating in the spiritual thing. You operate not the mind. And literally you call that good life. Woo. There's nothing wrong with having those things because I like nice things myself. But I will never be connected to nice things where the fuck think who I am. Ain't gonna do. You know how? But we don't recognize that. We take things so lightly. But we wonder why. We can't get God to move. Why it's so hard for us to get a miracle? Why it's so hard for us just to hear his voice? God, you ain't got to tell me yet. Yeah, just let me hear you. Why I can't hear him? Because I'm not tuned into him. I'm really tuned into the lust of the eye and the pride of life. 
Boy, y'all ain't saying that. I'm going to go buy my new outfit next week. But anyway, ain't going to. I'm not connected to it. When you connect to it, it affects your spirituality. When you can't even get the move of God when you're desperate. When you can't get God to uh, speak to you when you're going through something you need to hear. It's so big, it's so big to it blocks your communication with God. Y'all ain't saying that. Because I'm in the right house. And we're saying, Lord, what's going on? What's wrong? And we're fighting demons and principalities and powers and daughters, but we can't get a word from him. We're dealing with demons. We're fighting principalities. We're dealing with the things of the world. We're pressing our way through. But God, give me a cheerleader. Let me hear you say something. Let me hear you speak something. Let me tell him I'm doing all right. Let me see God that something and I'm lined up with you. Say something, God. God said, I can't interrupt with corruptness. I can't bind to your mind. I can only bind to your spirit. And as long as you left it out the stuff and trying to include me in it, when I'm ready to give you everything you desire, I'm ready to open up those you've never seen in your life. I'm ready to do stuff for you you can't afford. Say can't afford. Uh, I stopped. I can't afford it. That's God. Don't tell me you got something you could afford. Tell me when you got something you couldn't afford. That's God. Tell me when you afraid, when your range ain't no range. With God all things are possible. If God touch it, it can't come back. Tell me when you was walking by supernatural and not natural. Tell me when the only thing that bother you is when the enemy try to interfere with you getting your supernatural stuff. Why? Because you got to start dealing with things and disconnecting because God going to speak to you. God going to give you opportunity. God, God told me, said, God said, I always get your time to come up on the spotlight is coming. Your part you're supposed to play is coming. You don't know God is preparing you for a time when you're going to get on stage and you're going to perform. And it's going to affect everything around you. But if you ain't prepared to get on stage and you're going to have caught, you're not going to come off empty. Because you ain't learned what your motive, what your building and motive was about. Moses had a part to play. David had a part to play. play. They ain't the whole Bible. Your part is coming up. But if you don't understand, disconnect from your natural mind, when your part come up, you ain't going to be able to go on stage. You're going to shine. You're going to shine. I believe everybody get an opportunity to shine. Now, I believe everybody don't shine. Because they don't prepare for the opportunity. Because I believe he's a just God. What do you do for one? He'll do for the other. But if you're natural minded and you keep looking at things natural and satisfying the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and it's affecting your spirituality and your walk with God, tell me, if you're spiritual, why does natural stuff affect you? If you're so saved and so connected to God, come on, man. God has opened my ears to some things that I used to hear and didn't hear. But now nah, they say something, I say, ain't no way. Because God, people put God in stuff to justify stuff when God ain't in it. God ain't in that, man. You can call his name and say God all you want and put him in, include him in it, but he's not in that. He ain't trying to make you in that. He ain't trying to mold you in that. God ain't got nothing to do with that. 
And until you can understand that some things God ain't got nothing to do with it because it's a bunch of confusion and it's worthy. And you want God to bless you in your lust and your enticement? That has nothing to do with God. Have everything to do with you. Boy, y'all ain't saying nothing now. But when you commit your life to God and you all about God, God give you anything. But when you ain't committed to God and thinking like you committed to God and you really committed to God because you're still thinking like the world, boy, this is a good one or what? Just laying it down right here, isn't it? And you still connected to the world and you still getting upset and getting mad about things in the world and can't keep peace with God because of your problems that you have created. And now you want to make it a God problem when you created this mess? The devil's a lie. Yeah, he been a lie. He ain't got nothing. Yeah, he helping that spirit because he getting in your mind. But really, that ain't nothing. He ain't gonna build that. You build that stuff. Lord, Lord, Lord. You allow that to go on. You allow this to happen. Now you want to blame God for it? And mad at God because he won't move? Mad at God because he ain't saying nothing to you? When it was never about God, it's your lust and your enticement and your worldly mind that you won't disconnect from. When all your teaching and all your word or the word of God teach you to transform your mind and you will not transform your mind for nothing in the world. Because the world keep coming up. Y'all in the house? Amen. The world coming up, this coming up, that coming up. This is this what, what the word about. To transform your mind. You can hear the word till you blew in the face, but if it don't do nothing for your mind, it ain't gonna do nothing for your life. You keep thinking like you're thinking, you keep getting what you're getting. And you can leave church today and still think like you thought before you heard this. And still blame God for your shortcomings. Y'all now? Ain't that real stuff? Hey, I'm telling the truth. Man, I got to get it right. Man, I got to lose my mind. I got to stop these feelings and emotions to connect this connect my mind and bring them to the spirit of God. Let my soul be connected to my spirit and not my mind. I got to ride and ride and run, ride and ride and say if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. If it ain't going to happen, it ain't going to happen. Because I'm not going to allow my mind to get involved. What God, why you think he said what God got for me is for me? Why? That's to shut the mind up. That ain't for you just to speak it. That's to shut your thoughts that come to your head. That come, the old way that coming up, the old thought that coming up, to bring them under suggestion. Because when things ain't going like you think they ought to be going, why they ain't going like you think they ought to be Because the mind talking. So if you don't know what to do, it the mind of kid and you be upset and mad. And it got nothing to do with God. Come on, hallelujah, Jesus. Woo! Ain't that real stuff? Because until you grab on to this, shut your mind up and get in your spirit. If it don't shut up, just keep quoting the word. Draw closer to God. That's quote the saying what God said. I'm righteous. I'm good. Everything God got for me is for me. God opened up doors for me. Even when I don't see nothing. Why I'm cutting my mind. It's my mind, man. I got to talk. I learn how to ah! So now I just holler. Ah! I find that word for me sometimes. Shut it back. Because the, the mind, the, the world in my my mind been so silent so long. I, I got a silent mind. It's because it don't say much of nothing. 
Because he knows if he says so, I go to talking. Out loud, that guy is jumping. Because I don't have to listen to him. You can never get nowhere listening to your mind. You can never, you hear me? You can never get what God got for you listening to your mind until your mind is truly transformed. Because your mind will make you waver every time. I asked for a miracle from you last week. I asked for a miracle from you. I told you to stay positive all week. That was a miracle. You did that, that's a miracle. Or you're lying. Because there ain't no way in I'm in heaven that you kept a positive mind all week with this mind going. Y'all ain't saying that. Ain't no way you can do that. Not with this world of mine. The, the mailman put your bill on the ground. <laughs> now, it's a miracle for you. I sure did. I ain't know it was a miracle to this week. <laughs> Well, I'm going to say, how are you asking people to stay positive all oh, week connected to their mind? They worry their mind. They go in the store and the man throw their meat. Look at you! <laughs> I know you do your best. We all do our best. But we can do we can do 110. Amen. If we can just shut our mind up until it be transformed. Because to start, until it start agreeing with the word, it needs to shut up. It's something that your mind takes you into the end of the week when you on Monday. And you can't must know it. You don't even know it. Took you into Monday and you ain't even there yet. And you already feeling bad. Y'all know how? And you think it's all right. And all it's doing is computing your last Monday. Your last week. Your last month. The last time Auntie came over. <laughs> and you don't even know what it is. <coughs> but God tell you what it is. You can't trust your mind. Until it's been transformed. Until it quotes the word, stand on the word, and speak the word, you can't trust it. You got to download, re-transform your mind because all your sickness isn't, don't get better messing with your mind. Your struggle is in your mind. Negativity come out your mind. Orchestrated by corrupt nature with the help of the enemy. And until you be able to recognize this, I hope I'm open up the eyes so you can see. And I'm going to tell you something. And when you do it, it's so don't make no sense. What I'm saying don't make no sense. Because of how I'm going to operate without my mind. Because that's how I do my math. You better know what to use it for and what not to use it for. Amen. Because if you keep using it wrong, it never was to control you. It was to help you. Amen. Everything God gave you was to help you. Amen. But it was corrupt by the enemy. Yeah. And you can't trust none of it. God can give you a word. God can talk to you. And you know it's God. And by the time you get down there to that car, you be messed up. Because of the mind. And I, you got to shut that mind up. You got to begin to quicken your spirit, empower your spirit. And when I say, quote the word of God. 
Just talk it. Say it out loud. Don't just say it out loud. The mind be loud. Don't you hear the mind when they say something? It be loud too though. Look at them. Don't they make you sick? <laughs> Don't they make it? You hear that mind on them. It be loud on them. It shake your soul. You get mad all of a sudden. You got to shut it up. I'm telling you, God ready to do some supernatural thing in your life, but he can't get past your mind. I'm going to tell you this because this is what I heard. Some of y'all overdo. Some of y'all are overdue. And the only hindrance is God can't get past you. Because you can't get past your mind. Because it don't make no sense. It makes too much sense. Two plus two is four. But in the spiritual room, it can be 20. It can be 30. It can be 100. With God, all things possible to him believe. Everything combating what God is saying in your mind. That's how you know it's the end. He knows your mind. And if it can flow out your spirit and connects to your and bring everything in alignment, you'll see miracles happen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And people don't understand why they didn't get healed, why they didn't get delivered, because they waver. But they don't even know how they waver. God, I did everything. I did. I was possible all week. He said, your mind wasn't. <laughs> your mind wasn't possible. And you reacted everything your mind said. You just ain't say nothing. Out your mind came hallelujah. But in your soul, it was like, <laughs> God is the inner God. He ain't the outer God. You can impress people on the outer, but you can't impress God. You got to impress God from the inner. Ain't God good? Because people, uh, I mean, oh yeah, you. every time I see you, you're smiling. Yeah, that's what you see on the outside. But when I see you, I want to cuss. I feel t- <laughs> but, so God is always a God from the inner. And you got to you got to shut your mind up, and that's why you, that's why saying is important. Praising is all right. That's why you got to get your heavenly language is important. It ain't a time to meditate because you meditate, that mind gonna tear you up. Ain't God good? You ever try to meditate when you're going through something? <laughs> that seems like it enhanced it, don't it? <laughs> That's why some of y'all say, I don't know how they meditate. I can't read. No, because you're going through too much. You're talking about meditating. You need to praise God, sing. I know you can't sing, but everybody sounds good when they by themselves. And the words ain't got to be right. Ain't God good, because I be singing all kinds of stuff. I say, I love Because I can't remember the words. But I say, God, you know everything. Hallelujah. That's why you got to open your mouth. You got to praise God, talk to God. Everything to draw your mind, keep your mind shut up. Because God's going to speak to your spirit and have you do stuff that don't make sense. Sometimes I tell somebody, hey, go and apply for that. They say, I can't. I said, don't apply. I said, apply for it. Because they give it to you, that's God. <laughs> and then you can't get them if you don't apply. If you don't set up, if you believe God, all things are possible, you don't care what nobody say. I'm going to put it in there. Ain't God good. They be tired of me. They be like, hey, that's how I operate. Every time I be calling, oh, you got it? You know what I mean? <laughs> God, I'm looking for God. I believe God. I don't believe you, but I believe God. And I'm not going to let my natural mind get in the way of what I know my God can do. My God can do anything. My God got all power to say. And I'm not going to live by the natural mind, world in mind. And, and, you know how many times you don't hold yourself back from getting stuff because of your natural mind? I'm telling you, overdue. You overdue. But what's hidden is your mind. 
You got to shut that mind up. Until it transformed completely. It's got to be completely transformed. You can't trust that sucker. He's, that's a sin for nature. It makes a lot of sense. It makes too much worldly sense. It makes no spiritual sense. It makes all the worldly sense in the world. Ain't got good. Girl, you left. Why you left? Because I that tied up. I had sick of, that make a lot of sense to somebody that's worldly. But somebody that's spiritual, what God said, until you could catch them, you better stay with them. <laughs> that means you got to be an eye spy. You got to get in the car and follow them around. <laughs> you got to put your eyes on it. Because <laughs> he said, if you get, catch him, this is, this is if you catch him, that means you can't go about what nobody say. You got to get in your car and stalk him. You got to be peeking through the hotel with him. <laughs> Because the Bible says if you catch him. Y'all know? Y'all talking about, I heard that don't work, so you better go back home. Until you catch him. You can't go by that. Because your mind gonna have you going crazy at the house. Because you're out here listening to your mind and you ain't calling him. So even when you leave him, you won't want to go back to him because you didn't catch him. <laughs> Y'all know? You better put one of them eye spy cameras on their phone. So everything they see, you see. I'm telling you, they, they like, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Ain't all good. Because the Bible said you catch them. So you can't be making no sense out of stuff that the Bible don't, the word of God don't go by. Ain't God good. And you went by what your best friend said. You been by what your cousin said. And now your cousin dating them. But anyway. How you feel about somebody. You go about what somebody else said. Well, they funny. I got to get a known for myself. I can't go about what you say. And, and now you going about what people say. Because you corrupt in the mind too. Ain't got good. Y'all know how? But you don't know you corrupt because you thought they were just corrupt. But you corrupt too. Because you bought what they said. And you ain't getting no for yourself. Y'all know how? Ooh, glory to God. Now, I'm going to tell people, how you know about that? How you know that? You don't know them. You ain't never met them. Well, I heard, well, you corrupt. That's why God can't bless you. Your mind corrupt. You can't hear from God because you corrupt. Y'all know how? Y'all, 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 let me tell y'all, you're corrupt, man. Because you're going by your natural mind. You're making all this sense. I don't do this because of this. What God saying? You don't want to hear that. Y'all in the house? And I'm telling the truth. You don't want to hear that. Well, I know I'm right. You don't understand. I understand you corrupt. Because you're going by your natural mind that came from a corrupt society. Society. Hey, y'all good. Well, she didn't do it, so that's why I did that. You corrupt, man. You still couldn't justify that in God. Ain't no way you could justify that in God. And some of y'all saints and preachers are talking about, you right, you right. No, they ain't right. God is faithful and just to forgive for all our sins. Confess your faults, he's faithful and just to forgive you. Didn't he say that? So he knew he wasn't going to get right, we don't have to get right and be right, but he knew we were going to make mistakes and make errors, so he gave us a, gave us a way out, and we don't even want to take it. We're making excuses for our errors. Well, I treat him like this because of this. I do this because of this. Well, that ain't, that ain't what the Bible, word of God said. Because we don't recognize that we're still corrupt in our minds. And we use it to justify ourselves. Y'all know how? Amen. Y'all getting it? Amen. Ain't God wonderful? Amen. Put your hand together and give God some praise. <laughs> Make the sacrifice. You need to make to get out your corrupt mind. You'll get your miracle. But as long as you make your corrupt, let me tell you something. You cannot not waver with a corrupt mind. And the Bible declares that him that acts shall not waver. 
And if he don't waver, he'll get what he asks. Didn't what he say? Amen. If he don't waver, he'll get what he asks. But you cannot waver with a corrupt mind. Make a sense out of everything. But I love him. Do you love God? That's what you need to ask him. Say, you love them, but do you love God? Because see, like you don't love God, but you love them. So how God going to help you when you don't love him? Ain't that real? Amen. But, 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 I don't hear no but. You got, you got to give a stick on the word. God said, I got you. He's ready to bless you. The word of the day was teaching a good teacher, good word. But you got to understand that God is ready to bless you, man. You overdue for some stuff to happen in your life, but you got to disconnect from that corrupt mind and listen to the spirit. You got to stop letting the enemy use your mind to make you upset and make you mad and make you doubt God. You got to stop. Because it ain't working. No, it's not working no other way. You got to have God is your source. And you got to trust God. You got to believe what God say in spite of anything. When God speak, that's it. Ain't God good? Yeah. It's something when some people when speak, God speak, and you want to tell somebody else, you don't even want to tell them because they don't because they, they got a corrupt mind, and they'll make you doubt what God say. Because they say, "Ain't no way you can get that." How you think God's gonna do that? Huh? How you think God's gonna do that? You ain't working nowhere. You ain't doing this nowhere. You how you how God gonna do that? See, I shouldn't have told you my vision. I shouldn't have told you my dream. God said, I'm free. You open doors for me. You're gonna make a way for me. I'm gonna be better than I ever been. How that gonna happen? How that don't happen. With God, all things are possible. And I'm not talking about unbelievers, I'm talking about people that are supposed to be believers. You have more problems out of people that are supposed to be believers in a conversation than you do with people that don't, don't believe. Ain't that something? Amen. Oh, we're gonna get a, I'm gonna get a new house. How you gonna do that? God told me to go to college, they're gonna bless me. How you gonna get that? You ain't got no money. I don't, with God, with God. And by the time you got there, you got the spirit of doubt on you, and you hesitate doing what God said to do. Because you talk to the wrong people. Ain't that real stuff? Amen. You can't share this with everybody. Because there's too many corruption minds around. Some things you have to keep to yourself. And it's hard to do sometimes because you be so excited. You be excited about it. You know God told you. And you be excited. By the time you leave that corrupt minded person, you back on your natural mind and you corrupt again. Ain't that real? Ain't that real stuff? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Put your hand together and give God a praise.